Program Director, Deputy President of the Republic, David Mabuza, Premier of our province, Oskama Buyane, Ministers, Minister of Health, Dr. Mkise, Minister, Acting Minister in the Presidency, Minister Chabeni, MEC Math, MEC Mvoko, the Mayor of uh, Nelson Mandela A, CEO of Aspen, and all the other officials of Aspen, including Mr. Tombella, who is about to be a doctor, who took us around and showed us everything. And all officials and uh, officials of the company as well, as well as government, and all invited guests and the media who are here. I must say that uh, it's a real honor and uh, a privilege, really, to be here. The Deputy President and myself and uh, our two ministers are particularly pleased to be here today because in many ways we have looked forward to coming to a facility in our own country where vaccines are manufactured. The Deputy President and I often don't go to the same place. At the same time, we are told that it's a security risk. And today, the DP just said we will take the risk. It doesn't matter. We are here to see how we can save lives. Uh, but the DP did go to another facility, Biovet, to go and see how another facility in our country, which is partly owned by government, also makes vaccines. But coming here to this facility, Mayor, in Kabeja, or Nelson Mandela Bay, has uh, really been a great honor and, uh, and a pleasing event for all of us. We decided to come here in the wake of the, some of the challenges that we are facing in relation to uh, the pace at which vaccines are being administered to our people and also the availability. And we felt that we needed to reject some further urgency and activity and, and real movement in the administration of vaccines across the country. And we had a conversation with the minister, with the deputy president, with the executives of Aspen, and indeed the minister also took it forward with the executives of uh, Johnson & Johnson. And we said, this Aspen here belongs to us as South Africa and it is making life-saving vaccines, and we, as South Africa, must be in pole position to be able to get the vaccines that are manufactured here. But we also said we wanted the vaccines to be also available to the rest of the continent with immediate effect. And the minister of uh, the DP kind of put quite a bit of push on the Johnson & Johnson people and said, we need you to finalize a full commitment to South Africa and to the rest of the continent. And we are pleased with the outcome of that intervention, an intervention that has led to Johnson & Johnson finally saying yes and confirming and signing, I think as uh, late as yesterday, that they will make 220 million vaccines for the entire continent of Africa for starters, 
and uh, we anticipate that it will build up to even 400 million. And that, for South Africa, we will have the 30 million uh, vaccines. But I then impressed upon them that I want them now. I don't want them much later than now. And we are here, therefore, uh, to come and fetch our vaccines. <laughs> that's, that's what we've come here for. <laughs> yes, I've been here before, but this time around, I've come to fetch our vaccines. And, uh, uh, and as we were going around, Chairman Zamini, uh, the chairman of the company, uh, I was keeping my eyes on him and saying, you better go and report to the board that we're here to fetch our vaccines. We're very pleased with what we have seen here and the commitment that has been made. And we'll talk about that even much later, even possibly tomorrow, as we tell the rest of our people. We're very pleased with what we've seen. The world-class facility that is here is, is just in another league. And I'd like to congratulate Aspen for having a world-class facility to manufacture the vaccines for our country, for our continent. And indeed, yes, we're prepared to share them with the world as well. It is fantastic. It is a fantastic facility. But I was also particularly pleased with the people who work here people who work here, apart from the machines, there are lots of machines here, but uh, the people who work here are knowledgeable, they know their craft, they, they are scientists, they are pharmacists, they are engineers, and uh, they are well led by Sipiwa uh, Ndombela, uh, who, as I said, is going to be a PhD uh, candidate, uh, graduate soon. And we are also Please, Premier, that the facilities here in the Eastern Cape, the Eastern Cape where we want to continue creating jobs, and the Eastern Cape, because there's another facility in East London, Eastern Cape is really becoming an important, not only manufacturing, but also investment base for us. Stavros, Nikolai Stavros did say that at our investment conference, uh, Aspen did commit to, to investing 3 billion rand and I'd like to congratulate you. You have lived up to your promise of investing 3 billion rand and thank you very much. But I'm also here for more. <laughs> so, great congratulations to our province. Clearly, job creation is one of the key objectives that we have for this province. And I'm, I'm glad that our mayor being here also confirms that the city wants to improve the infrastructure. It wants to ensure that we create a conducive environment for investments to happen. The premier is working very hard in terms of their plans. Uh, the mayor, I'm pleased to hear that they are also doing exactly the same. Now, the vaccines that will be available from this sport are going to enhance our rollout uh, campaign and effort. Uh, Minister Mkise and the DP, through the Interministerial Committee, are uh, ensuring that indeed our rollout of vaccines program works extremely well. And one of the reasons why the DP is here is to make sure that challenges when it comes to rollout. The rural areas, the town areas, the townships must all be well covered when it comes to rollout. Now, the J&J &J vaccine uh, is going to be really beneficial to us because it's a 
one-shot vaccine. And that is precisely what we're going to need in the outlying areas, in the rural areas, uh, also in, in our townships. So for us, that is very important. I was very pleased to hear from Strive Masiewa, who we appointed when we were chair of the African Union to the uh, Africa Vaccine Acquisition Task Team, to hear him say that they had signed the agreement with Johnson & Johnson last night. Now, that is going to give a huge boost to our continent, and uh, when the COVID facility comes uh, into play, we are going to have even more vaccines for the entire con continent. Now, this is important for us as Africans, that as we deal with this pandemic that has engulfed the whole world, we are not left behind. With previous vaccines, Africa, uh, no, no, previous pandemics rather, Africa was often left behind. And in some cases, we were left maybe many years behind, and in one uh, case, we were even left 10 years behind. This time around, we are really going to be up there with your more developed economies when it comes to the rollout of vaccines. And it is for this reason that we are also calling for an end of vaccine nationalism, because the more developed economies have hogged vaccines, and we are continuing to call on them to release the vaccines for your more developing economy countries and especially on the African continent. And for that reason, we say vaccine apartheid must come to an end. Because in the end, in the end, in the whole world, no one is safe until everyone is safe. So all of us must be treated equally across the world, and uh, vaccines must be treated as a public good, available at affordable prices, right across the board. And it is also for this reason that we are calling for the World Trade Organization to waive its restrictions on enabling countries that can manufacture vaccines to be able to do so. South Africa and India and a number of other countries have been calling on the World Trade Organization uh, to relax uh, these waivers that they have and the and the, and the vaccines, or to grant us the waivers. So for us to be here today has really been a very inspiring, very uplifting a visit, because now we know where the vaccines are made. We've come here to confirm that Johnson & Johnson, uh, through Aspen, is going to make all these vaccines available uh, to us. So, Premier, your province and mayor your city here your metro is uh, going to be a life-saving province and a life-saving metro to the entire country and indeed to the whole continent and, uh, thank you for that so we are really pleased that we've had this opportunity of seeing for ourselves how well this facility operates and when I ask the question, where is our, where, how do we stand in relation to other facilities like this in the world? I was told that we are up there with the best. But uh, Minister Mkiza said, in fact, we set the standard. We are really up there setting the standard with the rest of the world. So it's pleasing to know that out of South Africa, we are going to be able to make vaccines that will be distributed uh, not only to our country but also to the rest of the continent. So the process of rollout then is going to gain momentum because as we heard the vaccines from Johnson & Johnson uh, are going to start really rolling out in a few days because it is from uh, April. So from April we're going to see a change, a sea change really, in the rollout of vaccines uh, throughout the country. We will go through the first phase and we've identified that all our health workers will go, frontline workers will go through the first phase and the second phase 
uh, is going to be another group of people. I think from here on, we are going to catch up lost time. The momentum is going to pick up and we should be able to meet the targets that we've spoke about. So I'd like to thank you, uh, Mr. Saad, for allowing us to come here, Premier, for allowing us to come here. This is the beginning of a new phase, an era in the rollout of the vaccines and saving the lives of our people. The question was how many uh, will we get? We, we, we have confirmed and uh, signed that we are going to be getting initially 30 million vaccines out of this facility and 220 million will be vaccines that will be spread throughout the continent. So here, 30 million, and as you well know, we've got a multi-supplier system of acquiring vaccines. Johnson & Johnson is one of those that we are buying vaccines from, and there are a number of others. And we continue to negotiate with a number of suppliers, Minister of Health and his official together with finance continue to be seized with that whole process. And there are many others, and Minister of Health, if you care, will, will be able to clarify all of that. And the, 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 the pricing uh, is also an affordable price because we are not overpaying and it is uh, part of the agreement process that we are involved in uh, with Johnson & Johnson and a number of other suppliers. What we have tended to focus on is to acquire vaccines and there's great competition around the world about acquiring vaccines and we have focused more on saying we've got to acquire vaccines as quickly as possible so that we can save our people's lives. Alungelo says that there's criticism against government for the slow pace of the rollout. The slow pace, which I spoke about initially, in saying that our coming here is going to add impetus to the process of rolling out. The slow pace has been given rise to the availability of vaccines. You will remember that we acquired vaccines initially from India and uh, through scientific processes we found that they were not uh, efficient uh, or efficacious for the variant that we had. And we had then to source other vaccines and uh, we used the Johnson & Johnson vaccines that were used in the trial process. And we were the very first, I guess, in the world to use the Johnson & Johnson vaccines and they, have been, they were used and they are being used for the vaccination of our frontline workers. And in the process, we are acquiring more and more vaccines. So availability is a challenge that all countries in the world are going through. You go to Europe, you hear that they've got a challenge of availability. Japan has started much later as like the third largest economy in the world in vaccination because availability also for them was a challenge. A number of African countries had thought that they would start earlier, but availability has been a major challenge. So we need to look at the issue of availability and look at the efforts that we are now embarking upon and making. And part of the reason why we have come here is to ensure that we speed up the process of the availability of our vaccines. And that is why we had to confirm, to confirm that we are going to get our 30 million vaccines from Johnson & Johnson. The minister will be able to clarify that our negotiations with others uh, are at an advanced stage and in fact we've confirmed with others we're waiting for the Pfizer vaccines to also be delivered. So we are on an ongoing basis accumulating
creating more and more vaccines. And in terms of the phases, we are still in the first phase. People tend to think that we have lost uh, time. We have lost a little bit of time, but we're still on target in terms of our phase, and we're now going to speed up the whole process of uh, getting these vaccines. So losing a little bit of time does not mean, in my book, that government is failing. Government has been committed, absolutely committed, to saving the lives of our people and making all efforts. And if you care to know, we have not been sleeping on the job. And uh, if you look into the eyes of the minister, and uh, also the DP, you'll find that there are red specks in their eyes because they don't sleep. And making sure that indeed we work very hard to, to get those vaccines. So we wanted to know when uh, to, uh, Aspen will be able uh, to answer that because the production line, uh, we saw the production line, we saw how the vaccines are now being produced and packaged. Uh, we saw that for ourselves, which is precisely what we wanted to see. So we've seen that production has commenced and it's going to start uh, picking up uh, uh, much, much more. I uh, had wanted to come a lot earlier. I'm rather glad I came now when they are now in the real action of producing uh, the vaccine. So pace is picking up and uh, we, we will be able in days because the commitment that the agreement says in April they must be able uh, to start uh, giving us the various batches. And because production of the 30 million does not happen in one day, it's going to happen sequentially and they are going to be delivering as and when that happens. Restrictions in the light of uh, uh, the fear that there might be a third wave and the light of uh, the holidays that we are going into, that is going to be finalized by the uh, National Coronavirus Command Council, which meets tomorrow. And uh, we should be able uh, to also discuss the matter with our provinces. Our Premier here participates in that, and our Mayor also participates. So they will be able to give us uh, the, the lay of the land in the province and tell us how we are all behaving here in the Eastern Cape and in uh, uh, Tabeja in relation to uh, whether we are observing the various protocols or not. And if we find that our people are not really observing the protocols and there's a fear and a concern that there could be a further surge, then we will have to re-examine our position and say, do we need further restrictions? The restrictions that uh, we've, had, we've come up with have helped to curb the continuing growth and the rise of the infections. But having said that, the matter is going to be discussed uh, tomorrow by the National Coronavirus Council, and we will get a report from the Eastern Cape here and get reports from other provinces and then a decision will be taken and an announcement will then be made.